Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer for the nice uh, invitation. Uh, I'm going to talk about improvised symbolic interaction. So, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to introduce my lab. It's the uh, uh, STMS, the Science and Technologies of Music and Sound. It's the research part of uh, IRCAM, Institute de Recherche et de Coordination Acoustique Musique. Um, very nice facility uh, in, uh, in Paris for uh, music research, music production, and uh, 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 sound technology. So here you can see the different themes that are uh, explored by the research teams. And I'm in a particular research team called Music Representation or RETMUS, which is kind of across all these uh, thematics. So we, you see that we are dealing with assistance to composition, to orchestration, music theory, and also uh, improvisation, performance, score following. Uh, so, I have been involved mostly, uh, mostly uh, during um, several years uh, into uh, composition, not really, not, not, not really live interaction, but I have uh, contributed to the design of uh, uh, environment for computer-assisted composition, that is offline system that composer would use. Here you can see pictures of uh, open music, one of the systems I have designed. But uh, for a few years, uh, um, I got more and more interested into improvisation and, uh, and live uh, interaction, but with a um, particular view on it. So uh, just to state a few ideas, uh, uh, very, very, a few very simple ideas, uh, if you want to program a creative agent that is able to learn from live musicians and to interact with them or to interact with other agents in a creative way, basically what you have at the current time is some, some mechanism for evaluating the past history for the uh, analysis of the present, that is, incoming events, and uh, some uh, anticipation strategies. So uh, you want to do this in real time, and of course you're going to use a lot of... Uh, um, techniques coming from signal processing and in, even processing, but uh, there are some, uh, uh, some, some things that you, you have to take into account. First of all, even in real situation with human, it takes time to come to a decision. It's not always so real time. Uh, and part of the decision could be to defer to a later time uh, the, the action. Uh, so, uh, such system will involve time and memory at different scales, just as in music composition system. And this is, uh, this is where my experience in music composition systems will help me to design the symbolic interaction uh, one. Um, so, the thing cannot be fully apprehended by mainstream signal, pro signal and even processing technologies. You need a view on deep musical structures and have some sort of cognitive hypothesis. Another remark is that uh, rhythm and pulse uh, may emerge in totally free improvisation situations. This is well known by uh, musicians, by uh, improvisers. And on the contrary, a pulse can sometimes be blurred and ambiguous in strongly metrical idiomatic situation. So you shouldn't have a too naive approach to these uh, matters of rhythm and pulse and beat. Uh, and the, the, another remark is that you have to deal with very special situation in the case where you, you, you're into creative agents because you have to deal with interactive learning situation. That is, the learning agent learns something from, from the human or for, from the environment, but it produces something, and this something that it produces changes the very uh, environment it learns from. So it's a complex situation. There is a complex dynamic that you have to understand. But it's, so it makes things more complicated sometimes, but it, it can also ease the process because there is a co-adaptation mechanism between all the agents, the human, the digital agent. And this, this situation, it's, it's absent from normal MIR situation. It's a very different. The interaction situation is, is a very different situation. And this co-adaptation, this co-evolution can actually speed up the, comp the mutual compre comprehension mechanism because the agent will converge to a certain common understanding. Okay, so to, to, to have uh, improvised symbolic interaction, you have to bring into synergy uh, a combination of means. You have to do machine listening, you have to do machine learning, you have to do stylistic simulation, you have to do symbolic music representation, construction, just as you do for composition. And all these means, you have to, to do them in a parallel way. They, are, they, are, they cooperate and they compete, uh, and they have to do this qu quickly enough to be able to interact with uh, human. So the idea is to be able to learn and play on the fly in live setups and to connect to instant contextual listening, uh, uh, sorry, to contact instant uh, contextual listening on the environment to some offline knowledge that you can also learn offline from corpuses, obviously. 
So concretely, uh, the, the, the project I'm talking about is the OMAX project. OMAX is a software that has been uh, designed, so with many, many people have contributed to this, uh, to this uh, adventure. And here you have the, the main so-called OMAX brothers and, and a lot of students, uh, PhD students and postdoc students who have contri uh, contributed a great deal to this adventure. And the thing is, so I will, I will, I will give information about OMAX and his latest uh, uh, evolution, but here's, uh, um, here's a graph showing that actually this ID has kind of sp uh, spread, spread out, and uh, there's an OMAX paradigm, which is this idea of listen, learn, model, generate, loop. And uh, it, uh, several people have, have, have taken actually the paradigm and tried to explore uh, parts of it, either uh, the, the visual, visual interaction, or uh, sound synthesis, or uh, information theory in the case of Shlobodizno, uh, uh, for instance. And unfortunately, I, I, had, uh, I had very recently this imp improvisation control by Donzé Sechia and the most, most regretted uh, David Wessel, who, uh, as you know, have uh, left us uh, uh, yesterday because David just very recently uh, uh, joined this adventure and told me he was very interested in, in, in this paradigm and had put some students from Berkeley in order to explore the formal aspects, formal, formal languages and automata. So uh, let me uh, uh, dedicate this presentation to uh, David. So here in the uh, right, uh, red circle, this is what we're doing actually at IRCAM. So Improtech has been ex uh, exposed by uh, Jérôme Nika uh, um, uh, on the first day, and I, I, I guess probably Mark Chemley will, will also talk about it. So I will concentrate on this part. So the idea is, is here to visualize a musician and uh, the context is a live music per performance and you want to, to learn model and play with musicians. So there's a kind of uh, uh, naive cognitive hypothesis behind this work is that when you, you are an improvising subject, you uh, you, listen some, you, you listen from three main sources. You listen from the past, that is from the memory, for instance, from what you have learned. Of course, you listen to the environment, to the fellow musician. And this is sometimes forgotten for, uh, by people who are designing this kind of system. You're also listening to yourself as a, as a musician. And all this information mix up and uh, regress in the past, uh, that is in the memory, and uh, build up some compressed, compressed images in the memory, which, uh, which uh, also form this stream uh, of information coming back to the, to the agent. And this is this evocation uh, relation. So you are evo evocating things that you have in, in, in the memory, which can come from any of the sources. So the idea of OMAX, actually, is just to reify, reify some jargon, computer science jargon. It, it, it means to make, uh, to materialize, to, 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 to make obvious. To, to. Uh, so OMAX will actually reify this kind of, of virtual past. We, we call this uh, the process stylistic reinjection because you have this, this uh, uh, feedback loop here that is uh, um, uh, uh, in action. So the very first work uh, began and it was inspired by a great researcher called Shlomo Dubnov who's, uh, who's at uh, UCSD by the idea of trying to model this musical sequence using compression uh, processes. So it's inspired by uh, 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 findings by Herter, who showed that the, uh, the, I'm reading the optimal behavior of a goal-seeking agent in an unknown environment is equivalent to compressing its observation to the shortest program that generates them. This evokes the talk yesterday by uh, 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 Gottfried, uh, and so there is a close connection between machine learning and compression. That is a system that predicts the posterior probabilities of sequence, given the history, can also be used for data compression. And reversely, uh, if you have an optimal compressor, you can use it for prediction. This is well known. So the first w the work used a compression algorithm, uh, namely the lempel ziv algorithm that I won't detail, but the idea is that you have a sequence and you build up a dictionary by segmenting incrementally this sequence into patterns. And then you build this structure which is call context, for instance here AB is a context, and continuation or prediction, here A is a prediction, so if you have, you have played AB, you can play A as a consequence. This is related to Markov processes, but this is more powerful than Markov because it's proven that you have optimal coding and universal pr uh, prediction, then you outperform any fixed order Markov machine. So it's, it's equivalent to having an infinite num number of Markov machines with any kind of uh, Mark uh, Markovian order. It's very powerful and very simple to implement. But uh, I, won't go, I don't go into the detail. The idea is that if you analyze the sequence, so this is a musical sequence, and for some parameter is, for instance, energy, duration, pitch, whatever. 
uh, is represented here. And so you locate patterns and you connect patterns, and then you can reshape the sequence by playing the sequence, and when you, ha you, you have uh, uh, recognized a pattern, you have the right to jump from this point to this point. In this case, you will create this shape. This shape is new, it has never existed in the analyzed corpus or in the live uh, music, but it is completely explained by the, by the pattern structure. So just to give an example of the, the kind of musical thing that you can achieve with this very, very simple thing, here's a, uh, a reconstruction of a chorus uh, by uh, uh, Jaco Pastorius uh, playing uh, Don Ali. So this is right from the record. So you take the sound stream, you, you apply the, the modelization and this reshaping uh, uh, um, uh, concept, and then it generates another sequence. So the sequence you will hear is not, of course, the original. It's recombined uh, at the rate of, in average, like two or three seconds. Every two or three seconds, there is a decision which is made which is different from the original. So it's a reconstruct music reconstruction. <laughs> It's not too bad, and you, you, you can hear that there's a pulse, and, there is, and, and there's a reason, but there, there is, up to now, absolutely no modeling of time, of, of uh, meter and rhythm. Here is just a change. It's, it's just that by recombining on the basis of pitch analysis and uh, statistical, formal statistical modeling, uh, then cutting the signal into, into chunks and then jumping the, the way it is shown here, it, it also brings these impulses that are played by the, per by the percussion, and there is an effect of pulse and, and rhythm, but it's not controlled. So in that case, we don't have to worry too much with this kind of signal, but of course, in general, you, you have to worry uh, about this. So this is style modeling, but now we want interaction. We want to be able to improvise with uh, this agent. So we need, whoops, sorry, need three things. We, we need the, this general, I call it epistemological framework that is trying to, trying to understand what you're doing, actually. You, have to, you, you need to have some, some powerful uh, um, uh, way of representing your knowledge. And you, you need some strategy for perceptual and uh, uh, for perception of the agent, anticipation and generation. So uh, again, listen, learn, generate, render. Uh, listening strategies. So uh, we're using um, um, uh, pitch following in a very classical way. Or if you have MIDI, MIDI information, we just cut the MIDI into, into polyphonic slices. In the case of arbitrary complex signal, we do some spectral processing by extracting spectral descriptors like MFCCs and trying to get some geometry where we, we can, we can lo locate the, 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 the extracted elements and cluster them into categories, which will become eventually alphabet labels in an alphabet like A, B, C. Uh, so it can be done on, in a Euclidean space. There, there, there have been some interesting researchers for trying to do this in information geometry. In inform ge uh, information geometry, you don't have Euclidean space. You, you have differ uh, differential manifolds, and points are uh, probability densities. And you don't have distance, but you, are, you have uh, informational divergence, such as, such as a uh, uh, KL. Uh, uh, cool back labor uh, divergence. So uh, the, this, this gives very, very good result, but it's not real time yet. So we came across a very interesting algorithm and formal data structures called the factorical, which is, uh, which is um, um, a finite state automata, uh, automaton which is even better than the compression algorithm. Uh, it's related to the compression theory, but I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I can't go into detail here. The interesting thing is that when you analyze a sequence, uh, you listen to a sequence and you extract, uh, by machine listening, you extract uh, a significant units like notes or, uh, or chords or, or textures or whatever you can segment into the signal, then they, 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 they're associated to a state in the automaton. And it's, it's a linear automaton that represents time, so consecutive musical elements are in consecutive states, and then you have additive arrows that explain, to totally explain the pattern structure. So these arrows uh, are called suffix, uh, suffix, suffix links. Uh, we discovered that they, they have actually a structure of tree. They, they constitute actually a forest of trees, many trees, and every tree completely explains the genealogy of a pattern. So you have a pattern connected to another occurrence of the, of the pattern in the sequence, and, and maybe this pattern uh, uh, will form a longer pattern connected to another occurrence of the longer pattern in the, in the sequence, etc. This is what you, see, what, you see, what you see here. So using this, it's very easy to uh, implement the reshaping by, uh, by uh, common, common pattern jumping I showed. We call this common suffix uh, jumping. 
Okay, uh, so this is uh, really, when we do this on the on audio signal, it's really, the, it's really a, a convergence between signal approach and symbolic high-level uh, uh, structural approach because you start from the signal, you, the machine listening gives you the symbolic units, then on the symbolic units you build up the, the formal structure, and then you have your map, your navigation map into the signal using the formal structure. Here's the Beethoven sonata which is analyzed, and it shows that actually the factor oracle is able to um, to recognize interesting uh, thematic structures, thoughts, such as first team, second team, uh, 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 third one, and uh, return of the first team, etc. Even in the case where the signal is very noisy, and it's actually equivalent to having correlation matrices, but it's much more efficient to compute because actually what you compute is you compute directly the interesting substructures of the correlation matrices, the parts where you do have actually similar similarities and repetition, instead of computing the whole matrix and then looking for the diagonals. It's very efficient. Okay, so this is our representation. It's, it's uh, nicely represented here with colored art. The, so remember, you connect distant parts of the, of the musical uh, streams. Here's a video where you see the, 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 the thing happening in real time while you're listening to a musician. Oh, it's a, it's a wrong... It's the wrong one. Actually, you should have seen the arches. Okay, th then there is this uh, um, navigation uh, heuristics, uh, which, uh, which helps you uh, navigate into this structure and generates new things uh, with a kind of sophisticated uh, uh, anticip anticipation patterns, uh, jumping from one point to another point if it's explained by a common uh, suffix. Okay, so this is this was the uh, traditional OMAX uh, thing, and here is the here you can hear the thing in interaction. That is, you hear a musician play, and you hear the system hooking up in real time, repeating repeating notes because at, at the beginning it's very dumb, and then hooking up and playing along with the musician. Etc. Okay, so uh, here I have a few examples of OMAX, but I will, I will skip them because uh, we're kind of late. So to get to the inter interesting part, which is the very recent work. So now we're going to a new level of interaction. We call this, the code name is SOMAX. The idea, so right now OMAX listens to the mission in order to learn, but it doesn't listen to the mission in order, in order to play while it is playing. So the idea behind SOMAX is, uh, is listen caref carefully, that is playing under the constraint of what's coming uh, di uh, directly from the env environment. So you, you are here in your um, uh, memory representation. So remember, you have arrows that tells you where to jump. But th there is also a live input who is playing this colored things here. So the idea is that you will prefer to jump in the location that match what's happening in the current, uh, in the current uh, input. It could be done very simply, like pitch matching or uh, any, any other parameter. Uh, here, same thing, but uh, you know, uh, uh, instead of matching with uh, uh, colors, like pitch colors or texture, you are matching with uh, phase location into a beat. So uh, it, it, it just shows that the, 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 the problem of beat and phase uh, uh, phase synchronization in to a bit is just a particular case of this uh, uh, of this general question of matching with some uh, characteristics of the input. This is the first ID. Second ID, when you analyze the input, you can separate several uh, streams. In the stream, in the musical stream, you can se separate several layers, several views. So you could have, for instance, a chorus view, a harmonic view, a rhythmic view, a phase view, and then this would give you labels. So these are chromograms. This will give you labels, and you, will, you, 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 you can label your memory structures with the information coming from this view. And then when you are navigating into the memory, you can jump uh, under the constraint of the, in of the direct information that is coming from the musician, or by trying to match the, 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 the label associated to some secondary view, like for instance harmony, if you're listening to a melody, like for instance harmony, and trying to match the harmony structure in the memory and the harmony structures as, as it is extracted from the live input. So uh, what I say for harmony can be generalized for uh, duration, beat, uh, rhythm. 
Uh, here's, uh, uh, I will maybe j jump there, this and go directly uh, to uh, the, the idea of time. So uh, now we want to address a problem which is called the cartographical blindness and the evidence ac uh, accumulation. So cartographical blindness means you are at some point in the, lab, um, in the memory, but you see only the points that are connected with arrows. That is the point where you could jump because it is explained by a common uh, substructure. But sometimes the input will uh, give you some evidence and, so, uh, and some evidence accumulation that you, you sh really should go elsewhere. So you should have a global, a holistic view on the whole memory. So this is what is achieved by this activation uh, profile scheme. So uh, suppose, for instance, uh, you, have your, you have your memory and the input is A, B, C. So when A, when A is coming, all the A parts in the memory are activated. When B is coming, all the B parts uh, are activated, and when C is coming, all the C parts are activated. But every time a location is activated in the memory, then time passes, and at the, at the next time unit, this activation which, which will, will shift one unit in the memory with this uh, exponential uh, um, uh, decrease. So the influence of having recognize, uh, recognized A in this location at the next time unit will be communi communicated to the, ne to, to the next uh, state in the memory, which is B, and at the next time unit, it will be communicated with this decreasing curve. This is what you see here. So this is a global uh, profile that is generated by ABC, and it shows that in the memory, ABC is, is highly activated, which is fine. BC uh, here, uh, uh, C is activated, BC is highly activated, but also ADC, which is very interesting, because it means that we could choose to jump in this uh, uh, location uh, on, the, on, the, um, on the criteria of uh, fuzzy pattern recognition, because we, we heard ABC and we jump to ADC as an alternative as a possible alternative to jumping to places where the pattern is exactly recognized. So this is very fine because it introduces some flexibility in the system. And so all these profiles for all the, all the streams, uh, all, the, all, the, all the musical views are combined uh, in order to give a general uh, energy profile. And then they are combined with, with profiles coming from time, timing and meter and beat uh, uh, considerations. So for instance, every time you have to jump, and you, if you have a beat structure in the memory, you're trying to jump in a place which is uh, uh, phase-wise consistent with the, the, the place you're coming from. O otherwise, you're going to break the phase, and you're going to break the pulse, and you're going to break the rhythm uh, sensation. So every time you have to, to jump, you generate a profile starting from the point where you are, which peaks at the, at the positions which are phase consistent with the, po the position where you start from. So uh, if you respect this, and, 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 you, you sy and also you synchronize uh, the, the, the beat information, the memory, to the beat information that is coming for, from the environment, for instance, we some bit tracking, and we, we generally use uh, uh, um, implementation of uh, at large uh, IDs for that, and it was uh, quite well. Then you will have uh, quite, you will achieve a good uh, uh, al alignment between the digital agents and. Uh, the uh, human and other digital agents, and you can also uh, choose some flexible time scheme where uh, starting uh, from the present and looking back into the, the, the last element that have been played in the environment by the external uh, agent environment and the last uh, 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 event in the memory from the time you are, you try to find the best stretching uh, factor that will uh, that will help you to, to match the elements one with the other. So, for instance, this is a curve with the stretch factors and the, uh, uh, the so-called uh, uh, alignment quality. And you see that you have peaks, and if you, if you choose the peaks, then you, which you will, will, will achieve a good alignment. So, by incrementing this. Uh, this value continuously, the, you will have flexible rhythm adaptation. So if you have a pulse that is not a uh, um, written pulse, but that emerges from a free improvisation, locally from a free improvisation, hopefully the system will be able to hook up and kind of uh, uh, smoothly adapt to emerging pulse. So just, uh, I, th I think we began a li little bit late, so maybe I, I can f take just a few minutes to, to, to play uh, examples. Right. So I'm finished with the theoretical thing, and I will show you three examples that has been uh, recorded at the Open Door Tircam in June. So here you have uh, Remy Fox playing the saxophone, he's improvising, and the system improvises with him uh, on the basis of uh, corpus of uh, Bill Evans 
uh, uh, voicing chords and voicing uh, corpus. And so uh, the, the digital agents will adapt uh, melodically, harmonically, and uh, 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 bitwise uh, with this phase, phase, uh, phase alignment system, bitwise. And also, there's the flexible time is also used when the musician, when, the, when, when there is fluctuation in, the, in the, the way the musician improvises, you will see that the system smoothly uh, um, uh, adapts. <laughs> Here at this point, there is an interesting anticipation phenomenon because it, it seems that the, the, the system and the musician kind of agree on, on the, the harmonic uh, movement of the, 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 this ascending melodic movement and the, the chords arrive in a, in, a, in, a, in a region, in a harmonic region, which is very consistent with the style. And this, this, this is something that was very hard to achieve with the OMAC system. And here, it, it's really a consequence of all the mechanism I've, I've, talk, I've talked about, this idea of uh, uh, cartogra cartographical blindness, which is kind of, kind of solved. The reason, the reason which makes that when, when the, the ascending movement arrives to the top note, the chords arrive with the right time, timing. And all these parameters converge in order to, to, to give this kind of uh, uh, right anticipation feeling. So just uh, another uh, example, which is uh, more complex. So uh, here Remy improvises. Then uh, two clones are launched, which listen to Remy and learn from, uh, from Remy harmonically and melodically. Uh, and then uh, the two clones improvises while listening to Remy. And Remy can drive the two agents to unison or heterophony by evoking the initial mat uh, material because, because of the, the activation profile mechanism. If, if Remy evokes the, the initial material, then the, the clones will have tenants to, to, to get right in the right area of the memory where this material is located. <laughs> This is the first improvisation. I will jump very quickly. And the clones. Here, the clone is synchronizing with the musician because it found the right place in the memory. And just, just a very short last example, and then, and then I'm done. This is the most, most complex uh, exam example. So there is a, an agent trained offline on Schoenberg's uh, Klavierstück uh, pieces, and this agent improvises uh, with melodic listening to, to Remy, the saxophonist. So it kind of re-improvises the Schoenberg Klavierstück under the constraint of the, the under the melodic constraint of the, what the saxophonist is, uh, is doing. And uh, there's a second agent which learns on the fly from the saxophonist, from, from Remy, okay? It learns the melody, the, it learns the, the statistical model. But 
it, it uses a harmonic labeling that is not coming from Remy. It's coming from what the first agent is, is, uh, is currently doing uh, while playing the, the Schoenberg uh, reimprovisation. So it learns the, the, the melody from Remy under, under the, label, the harmonic labeling. So it learns actually the correlation, the harmonic correlation between what Remy is doing and what the first agent is doing. And then uh, in the second part, agent A1 and A2, they improvise together. They listen one to each other. So, one, uh, so A2 listens to A1's harmony, and A2 listens to, uh, uh, A1 listens to A, A, uh, uh, A2's, A2's melody. So they co-improvising. And then the human get back into play. So that's, that will be the last example. So free re-improvisation re of Schoenberg, Klavierstück. There's an interesting thing here, which is the question, where do I enter into the improvisation? Maybe you will see a series of false start. It's interesting, I'll leave it because... Okay, so he plays. The, the, the piano improvisation adapts to him. And then there will be a second agent. replicates the initial situation, but, but now we have no human, only the two agents, and then Remy will come back into play, that will be the, the end. And I will finish with this example. Thank you for the additional time.